Hey everybody, welcome back to Ready Steady Play. We're about to run down the rules and setup for Terraforming Mars, yeah. which we're about to get into. For this playthrough, I'm joined by Ben Hirsch, Chris, I don't have a second name. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, the mystery man from another place. <laughs> I think I'm pretty sure Ben puts my surname in the in the in the title cards. So I did that. Oh, it was you, was it? I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I had but if, if you want to, if you want to find out my second name, you will need to uh, stick around with the title cards. Or just go back to the beginning of this episode, and you'll see it right under where it says "Terraforming Mars." Or check uh, our Facebook page <laughs> where Chris or Chris may not have left a comment or a like or something. But I have at some point. <laughs> you should probably like our Facebook page. I have. Oh, okay. Just make sure. <laughs> All right. So with that done, we're now ready to. Explain the rules. To Explain the rules Mars. of Terraforming Mars. Terraforming Mars is a game in which we all play as corporations from the planet Earth, terraforming the planet Mars. It's set in the future and takes place over many generations trying to turn this lifeless red rock into a habitable green terra. Um, the way we do this is by transforming the oxygen on the planet from zero oxygen into 14% of oxygen, which is apparently what we need to breathe. Apparently so. The planet is also incredibly cold, which is crazy because it's like third rock from the sun or second rock from it's the sun. It's further than we are. Is it? Yeah, it's one yeah. out. Is it one out? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was one in. No, no you're That's thinking of Venus. Venus. All right, I'm going to be good at this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad that you were the first person to make him a, a, like a... <laughs> a size mistake. Yeah. Yeah. This game, yes. this playthrough is going to be full of those. So we need to increase the temperature from negative 30 all the way up to plus 8 degrees Celsius. Which is hotter than Iceland, so... <laughs> hotter Makes than sense. Iceland. I feel it could be two, two plus two would do, but, you know, apparently not. Well, yeah, but we're designing this planet. No yeah. one designed Iceland. That's true. That's true. Oh, controversial statement there. <laughs> Moving swiftly <laughs> on. Vikings did, I guess. <laughs> well, no, I was thinking more about uh, God. <laughs> oh, right. It's controversial. Yeah. Anyway, moving swiftly on, uh, we also need to create water. So we will be placing down nine lakes on Mars to uh, complete our terraforming project. When the planet has oxygen, heat, and water, uh, the game will end, and whoever has the most terraforming points uh, will win. Well, actually, it's whoever has the most victory points will win, and I'll explain how we get those now. So, since we're doing a cut, can I just say, actually, that's a good point. Iceland really is proof that God doesn't exist when you think about it. Why would you have a place that for six months has only daylight and for six months has no daylight? This is the player board. On the player board, uh, we track our resources and our income during the game. Um, the This is uh, Millennium Euros here. Here we've got steel and titanium. We've also got plants, energy, and heat. Below, on this uh, brown surface here we've got our income and you can see here that uh, money can go all the way up to 10 and all the way down to negative 5. Note that uh, this negative 5 is the absolute uh, minimum income you can have um, but 10 is not the cap so you can actually this little arrow here just means that you can just go up as high as you want and just keep stacking income. That applies to all the other resources. This applies to all of them as you can see they all have that little arrow. This is your uh, terraforming reputation and uh, this is uh, accrued by terraforming Mars, by increasing the oxygen, placing the lakes, etc. And uh, your income is actually equal to that value plus whatever's on this tracker here. All the rest operate in isolation, so they don't have that. This is also the, the, uh, the track that goes all the way around the board. That's what it's equal to. That's what it's represented by. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, resources, which are represented by these little cubes here, are going to be placed on this board to represent quantities. We've got, um, oh, this is great, what I've done here. <laughs> we've got copper for ones, we've got silver for fives, and gold for ten. These resource cubes actually represent all resources, so if you put them, this is, why have I not Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. Well, it's because it had huge, huge glare when I laid it flat. Uh, yeah. So when you put these cubes into these spaces here on the board, which I can't do because of the way I've set this up, <laughs> <laughs> they represent these different resources. So if you had 10 money, you would just place this here on the board. Then, uh, these, so these operate as different pools and the resource values represent what pool they're in. Um, steel is uh, this one here and that's titanium. As I said, these can be used for, to represent money as well based on what you're building. 
So if you're building a building, you can use steel instead of, instead of money. Exactly right. So for example, if we were building this research outpost, we could have to pay 10 money for this. As you can see that symbol there. 18. That's an 18. Yeah, uh, 18 money for this. <laughs> as you can see that round uh, circle there is equal to uh, the same sort of symbol here. And that's going to represent ink money throughout the game. You can see also here that uh, that's money as well there representing something else. So it's got that sort of iconography thing quite common to uh, these kinds of games. You've also got this symbol here, which means it's a production building, which matches this one here, which means you can pay for it with steel, and each steel is worth two money. Uh, the same goes for titanium, except instead of applying to production buildings, that applies to space stuff, like this uh, imported hydrogen from Earth. This has a space thing there. So you can pay for that with titanium. So you could pay for the 16, you could, uh, what, you could pay three titanium, and that would be nine money? Yep. And you have to make up the rest of the money with money. Yeah, exactly. Right. So you can pay in any combination of titanium and money that you, you want. You pay five titanium and one money. Yeah. Correct. You okay. could pay six titanium, but then you would lose out on two. Yeah. So other resources are essentially more efficient ways of doing a specific thing. Yes. Yeah. Although it's harder to come by titanium and right. steel, but then they also have fewer uses. Fewer uses, yeah, but they're better at that one. Yeah, okay. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah, money is a jack of all trades. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Then we've got down here, we've got plants, and plants are used to make forests. If you have eight plants, you can pay them to build one forest, which looks like this, and you can then place that on Mars. This is energy. Energy can be used to sort of pay for various things, but at the end of your turn, energy will convert into heat. You can also have a heat income here, which is, you know, um, adds directly to your heat pool. And at any time, you can pay eight heat to increase the temperature of the planet, which is one of those three victory conditions we talked about or end game conditions. So now that we've covered the player board, we're going to talk a bit about how a turn works. Because we've got all our resources and our income sorted out, we're full of resources, but how do we spend them and what do we do with them? Each turn is, takes place sequentially, and uh, on your turn you'll take two actions, and then the turn will pass to the next player. Um, in this case it would be Ben, and then Chris, and then back to me. And um, on your turn you take two actions, or you, if there's nothing left you want to do, you can pass. The, this will continue until everybody's passed and the round ends. Um, if Chris passes before Ben and I are finished, we'll continue to go until we're all completely finished. In Terraforming Mars, a turn is actually called a generation, and that's an entire turn. And the reason it's called a generation is because it represents generations of Earthlings going up to Mars and spending their entire lives to make changes to the planet. And uh, the first thing that happens in a generation is we move the first player marker. So that marker will start with whoever started the game. In the rules it says the first player is actually the last person who won a game of Terraforming Mars. The second <laughs> phase is the research phase, which is uh, where we're going to sort of uh, get a bunch of hand of cards and uh, choose which cards we're going to keep. And I'll get into the cards later because they form the meat of the game. Then we have the action phase, which is what I was just talking about. Take uh, turns doing one or two actions. You can, uh, as an action, you can uh, play a card. You can use a standard project there. You can use um, an action from a blue card that you've played. I'll uh, talk about the blue cards in a bit. You can also convert plants into greenery, as we saw on the player board. Uh, greenery are these forest tiles, which I was talking about previously. I call them forests. I think that's nice. Um, you can also convert heat into uh, temperature, raising the temperature of the planet. You can claim a milestone, which uh, we'll talk about later, but you can kind of see up here on the camera. And uh, you can also fund an award, which is over here, and I'll talk about funding awards in a bit as well. But first, let's talk about standard actions. Standard actions, or projects, are uh, listed here on the player board. And uh, these are typically sort of, uh, the sort of fundamental things you can do to change the planet, or kind of emergency things. For example, you can sell one of the cards in your hand for one money. Um, you can sell X cards for X money as one action, but uh, because cards cost three each, this is a really inefficient way of making money. So you really only want to do it in a pinch. You can also spend 11 to build a power plant. Now uh, note that the power plant is not actually uh, a token or a card that you get. It simply increases your energy income by one. And the reason you can tell it's income is because of this brown border here, which is also represented here on the brown border around your income on your player board. Finally, uh, you can spend 14 here to uh, crash an asteroid into Earth, into Mars. <laughs> Don't crash it into Earth. That'd be a disaster. And uh, when you crash an asteroid into Mars, it fractures the crust of the planet, releasing heats, uh, heat from the planet's uh, molten core. This raises the temperature. Makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can spend 18 to place a lake. 
Um, What's it called? An aquifer? Aquifier. Oh, okay. Aquifer. Aqu- yeah, it is aquifer. Aquifer. Yeah, that means, you know, make water. water. Make water happen. Stuff. Yeah. You can spend uh, 23 um, millennium bucks to make a forest or a greenery. There we go. It doesn't really matter if it's a forest or a jungle or a copse, so long as it produces oxygen. And that, uh, whenever you place a greenery, that actually increases the oxygen on the planet. So we'll, uh, more on that later. And then 25 to build a city. Here are the cities. All the cities. And um, when you build a city, your income goes up by one. A money income. No, Ben, not your terraforming points. Your income on your player board. This one right here at the top. And also you can tell, because that's brown, and there's more brown here. This funny brown thing that means income. This is Mars. And uh, the first thing you'll notice about Mars, perhaps, is that it's got a bunch of tiles that we can build things on. Now, it's important to note that Mars, unlike Earth, is completely flat, which means that uh, when you put a tile down here, it is not adjacent to a tile down here. (laughs) (laughs) And um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be building cities like this on Mars, and uh, when you put down a city on Mars, you can put a little one of your player color token cubes here to... uh, to claim that city or to represent that that's yours. You can also put down uh, greenery and stuff like that. When you put down a, a city or a tile on Mars and cover up one of these hexes, you gain resources equal to uh, the symbols on that space. So for example, building up here in the Lune Planum, you get nothing! But building down here around the equator, which I suppose is hotter, you get uh, two greenery. Uh, building up here in the Viking site, you get two cards. So you just draw those from the top of the deck. When uh, at the end of the game, each greenery you've placed uh, is worth one victory point. In each city you've placed is worth uh, one victory point per greenery adjacent to it. And that can be anyone's greenery. It doesn't necessarily have to be yours. For example, Ben's city is now worth two points. When placing tiles, sir? I said lucky Ben. Lucky Ben. <laughs> I, I made it silly because I built a greenery in next to your city instead of mine. But I couldn't actually do that in this case because when you place a tile down, it needs to be adjacent to uh, one of your existing tiles. The exception is a lake, which must be as near as possible. So if I were to build a lake... Yeah, your first tile can go anywhere. Your first tile can go anywhere because you haven't got one yet. Uh, Subsequent tiles must be touching an existing tile. Um, Or, you know, lakes, uh, which must be placed on these blue spaces here, which are spaces where lakes can be made. must be placed as close as possible. So in this case, I would have to go here, or here, or here, and uh, Ben would have to go there. Mm-hmm. Lakes do not have an owner, so uh, you don't claim them, and you don't they don't count towards your total number of tiles on Mars. However, um, if anyone builds next to a lake subsequently, they get $2 for every lake they're next to. So in this case, I'd get two, and in this case, I'd get four. Of course, I can't build there, because I need to be adjacent to myself. But you only get that bonus when you build. It's not if the lake appears after yeah. you've built. Exactly right. So you've got to build next to a lake, not uh, have any, a lake next built next to you. However, if I have put down a lake here, say I'm like this, and Ben puts a lake down here in Lis Chasm, he would get $2. Oh, cool. No, because the lake's next to a lake. Because the lake's next to a lake. Uh, okay. So you want to not be the first lake? Um, unless you probably get, not, unless but... Uh, And this is uh, leading on to our next thing, which is this terraforming reputation tracker here. This is uh, called terraforming... terraforming... it is terraforming reputation. TR, something it must be terraforming reputation. Or terraforming resource or something. But this represents how good you've been at terraforming Mars, because even though we're all working together to terraform Mars, we're all working against each other to be the best at it, because we're all representing big companies from Earth who are getting paid lots and lots of money to do this. So we want to be paid the most profitable. Yeah. Well, then the hardest and win the hardest, yeah. So, uh, that's represented here by our reputation points, and uh, this is another tracker. You'll note that this, uh, from the symbol here, this is the one that uh, combos with your uh, income. money income to uh, generate your total money each turn. So if you start with zero, you'll be getting 20 each turn, because we all start on 20. But whenever you fulfill one of these three victory conditions, i.e. increasing the ex- oxygen by one, increasing the temperature, or placing a lake, then your terraforming reputation will go up by one. 
And so it will continue to go up by one, which is great because you'll get an extra victory point at the end of the game. And furthermore, you will uh, increase your income, uh, of your money income during the course of the game. So you get terraform reputation points every time you increase temperature, oxygen, or lake. Mm -hmm. okay. However, once one tracker is full, you'll no longer get points for doing anything that increases oxygen. Oh, okay. So if you put down a forest after we've maxed out the oxygen tracker, you don't get a terraform point for that. Okay. So um, I've gone over these trackers uh, at the start to show you how the game is ended, but uh, it's worth noting that uh, when you achieve 8% oxygen in the atmosphere, whoever uh, achieved that final upgrade there also gets to increase the temperature of the planet by one, which will give you two advancements on the terraforming reputation tracker. You'll note also that uh, when you hit 24 degrees, negative 24 degrees Celsius here, you get one heat income. And the reason we know it's income, again, is this little brown square. When you get up to zero degrees Celsius, you can place a lake, because I guess you melted something, because now we're above <laughs> freezing. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, you can also see that there's the little universal symbol for oxygen here in the game, and that appears on all of these greenery tiles here. You can see that the little oxygen symbol there to remind you that whenever you put down a greenery tile on the planet, oxygen increases by one. So where are we living while we're doing all this? Cards. We need cards. Uh, well, I'm going to do milestones and awards now. Okay, so you need this. Mm. So another action you can take on your turn is to develop a milestone. Now, milestones cost eight to develop, as you can see here. You can develop up to three of them total, and this is a communal amount by players. When a player develops a milestone, they put down their player cube on the space they've just developed. I mean, sorry, on the, the, the one they, the claim they've made. And then they also choose one of these conditions that they satisfy. So, for example, if Ben were to choose mayor, that would mean he's got three cities on the board that he owns. Yeah. Maybe like that. This is a dreadful design, but... <laughs> it's power design. It's power design, exactly. And uh, it's forming one giant mega city. But he does have three cities, so he can take the mayor claim. At the end of the game, this will be worth five victory points. Um, maybe I go for gardener. So I would do that. Once three spots are taken, then uh, it's all gone. And you can't take the other two left over. And what you've got is the first one to 35 terraforming reputation, the first one to three be the mayor of three cities, then you've got the first one to have built three forests, you've got the first one to have eight production cards. Now this will come into it later, but this is a production icon which appears on the cards you play. And uh, this is the first, per or this is one you can claim while you have 16 cards in your hand. You've also got awards. Awards are like a sort of, I guess uh, they represent like a, a nice fancy ceremony that takes place back on Earth, but of course one of us has to fund them. And I guess the reason we like to do this is because as giant corporations, this helps to celebrate our successes and make us look better in the face of all the lesser corporations. Well, you've got uh, your first, second, and third funder costs here, and uh, this costs eight, 14, and 20. So this one, unlike the milestones, gets more expensive as the awards are funded. When you fund an award, you put your player cube down there, and then you take another player cube and you put that on the award you want to fund. This one is for the person with the most tiles on the board at the end of the game. This is the person with the highest money income at the end of the game. Note that this doesn't include terraforming reputation. This is just the monetary income tracker on your board. This one is for the person with the most scientist icons on their cards or in their tableau at the end of the game. This one is the person with the most heat left over on their player board at the end of the game. And this one is for the person with the most steel and titanium totaled on their player board at the end of the game. Now, when you unlock one of these awards, let's say I did Scientist, um, this is actually still open game for anyone to win. So if, some, if Chris goes and builds a whole bunch of science things and actually has more science income uh, icons than me at the end of the game, he gets the science award That's and I get cross with him. <laughs> <laughs> however in a three player game there is a second place you've got winner and contender that's sort of like thanks for trying so the winner gets five points and the contender gets two in a two player game you don't play with this one it's winner takes all playing a card is a main action in the game and we're going to have a big old deck of cards here to draw from and it's enormous. it is enormous and the way these cards come <laughs> out and who gets a hold of them um, kind of determine sort of the flow and the winner of the game. And uh, there are three kinds of cards in this massive deck. You've got project cards like this. Green. Green, 
You've got uh, event cards like this orange, orangey red thing, and then you've also got um, I guess they're action cards. I'm not quite sure. Pro they can also be called projects. Yellow so I and mean, blue. Great. <laughs> yeah, I want a job. <laughs> yeah, damn it. <laughs> um, that's why it's funny because he's colorblind. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the blue sort of actiony cards here. So when you play a card from your hand, you will um, pay the cost up here. And this is a project card, so uh, as we know from looking at our player board, we can pay for it with steel. And then uh, you enact the effect down here. In this case, you would place a mining tile on the board and uh, you would gain some extra income. Now this one actually has two little asterisks, asterisks on it, which means that there are special rules, so you should read this text below it here. Um, what this means is that, what this text means, or rather what the asterisks mean is that there's special rules in the text that apply that you might not get from just looking at the iconography. And that's the mining symbol there, yeah. which is one of several random chits which are all unique to various cards. So this, these, these may or may not come into play, basically. Based exactly. Based on the cards right. we get. You can see from our Electro Catapult here, there's no asterisks, so we can more or less get entirely what's going on from these icons. Cryptic, mysterious icons. Once you've played this card, you'll leave it face up in your tableau, and it will just remain there until the end of time, because it might become relevant for the purposes of other cards, combinations, and things like or, that. Or this is going towards the building milestone. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. It can help contribute to your building milestone as well. Then we've got uh, this event card here. This is a very expensive event called Dimus Down. And it costs 31 to play it. And uh, it's a space card, so you could help pay for it with titanium. And it's got this arrow, which means it's an event card. And the way events work is they just kind of do a thing, and then they go into your own personal event discard pile. And it's important to maintain that discard pile because some cards uh, have special combos that benefit from the number of events you've played or the number of events your opponents have played. So it doesn't go into your tableau? No, it okay. goes face down into an event discard pile, okay. but that's your private event discard pile. Cool. So if we were to play this, we would increase the temperature of the planet by three. Wow. We would uh, gain four steel. That's not four steel income because of the, you'll notice there's no brown box here. Also, we can remove up to eight plants from any player. Again, that's a resource, not their in plant income. So that would, uh, we could... Um, I could only affect Chris or Ben with that, but I could uh, choose to delete up to eight plants. Finally, we've got this Electro Catapult. And the Electro Catapult says, as an action, so blue cards are uh, action cards. So when you play them, they remain face up on your tableau. Um, again, these icons contribute to things like milestones and stuff like that. Icons are kind of a universal pool from all of your cards, but note that your event cards are face down, so their icons don't contribute to this pool. But all of your blue and green cards are face up, so all the icons are totaled. And uh, this also has a cost of 17 that would pay, but it's also got this uh, requirement here, which says max 8% oxygen. Oh. Which means that after the oxygen level rises above 8%, we can't play this card anymore. So you've got to get it down fast. There are some things that can affect that, but uh, you know those cards are uh, elsewhere in the deck. So try and get this out before uh, the oxygen level gets too high. And it says here um, at the bottom, well, it explains what's going on in the text here, but what we can understand is that uh, you also need to decrease your energy production by one step uh, when you play this card. Note that if you can't do that, uh, you can't play this card. So you must have an energy production of at least one to play this card. What this allows us to do is each turn as one of our two actions, we can uh, spend one of our plant or steel resources and gain seven millennium euros, or mega euros, or space bucks. Space bucks. Euros. Credits. Republican credits. <laughs> also, at the end of the game, this card is worth one victory point, as represented by this planet here. You'll notice as well, from these two cards we just showed you, Mining Area and Dimus Down, that Mining Area has a little red triangle on the bottom of it. Oh, uh, drunk cards. Little red triangle here. The absence of this triangle means the card is a basic set card. So if you want to play like the beginner game or the learning game, you can take out all of the cards with this advanced red symbol on it to create a basic game. These are the beginner corporation cards which you'll use in the basic set of the game. Um, every one is the same. There's one for each of the five players you could play with, but they're all the exact same. And it says you start with $42 and 10 cards. And that's it. That's all they do.
So these are the corporations that we'll be playing as. The uh, corporations that want to come and terraform Mars and make lots of money and be celebrated on Earth. And they all kind of do different things. But uh, what you'll get typically from one of your corporation cards is uh, this, which is your starting amount of money, and it's all different. Um, you'll also get an effect, which is kind of like a special rule that alters the, uh, the game as the game progresses. And some of them even start with a little icon in the top corner that can help combo off cards and things that you start with. For example, Helios here, you start with three heat production, which is great. You start with $42, which is pretty cool too. And also it says here, you may use heat as dollars. So you can spend your heat as though it were dollars. That's cool. And that's pretty cool. Um, here's another example, Credit Core. Now they don't get a symbol to start with. Uh, they start with $57, which is loads. And it says after you pay for a card or a standard project with a basic cost of 20, you gain four more dollars. So essentially, they're all about making more money and getting more money stuff going on. How do we get a corporation? Well, that's part of the setup. So once we've set up the game, which means everyone's got a player board and everyone's got a color of tokens, those are yours, you're green. Whoa, we'll get rid of those. Everybody's gonna get two corporation cards and they're gonna get 10 project cards. You can then look at all 10 of, uh, well, all 12 of these cards and kind of see if you can formulate a plan. You know, what you're really looking for is sort of some project cards that combo together nicely with the corporation you start. So at least you'll know you'll come out the gate strong. You choose one corporation the two. Yeah, right? you yeah. choose one of the two corporations that you like the look of, and then you pick uh, as many of these cards as you want that... Um, you pick three kind of card. Well, yeah. yeah. So once you, the reason you might not take all 10 cards is because you take you pay three per card, and as we know from our corporation cards here, we've got a starting value of money there. So if I were to take all cards with Foblog, I couldn't because I don't have enough money. But Foblog start off with very little money. Cool. They do start off with uh, titanium though, which can be used as money. Hmm. And then once we've got our starting cards and our starting corporation, we're ready to go. We've uh, got our turn here where we're playing cards. And uh, those are the cards we were just talking about and uh, doing all of our actions here with the milestones and everything. And then when we get when uh, we get to the final phase, the production phase, that's after everybody's passed. First thing that happens, um, which it doesn't mention here actually, is that all of our heat resource turns into, all of our energy resource turns into heat resource, the which is recorded it. on your player board here. And uh, then we gain our income and stuff like that. But uh, and we move back up to the, uh, the first step here. Now the research phase, this is what I want to talk about because this is important. In the research phase, which is skipped in the first generation um, because we've just got those 10 cards with our corporation in hand, but uh, in the research phase we get four more cards dealt to us. And uh, we look through those four cards, we decide how many we want to add to our hand and how many we want to get rid of. And for the cards we want to add to our hand, we pay three of our bucks per card. Note that this does happen after the income phase, which is at the end of the turn, so we will always have some money to put uh, to pay for these cards. So I think that just about covers it for uh, terraforming Mars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You guys have any where, questions? Yeah, where where so there's not enough oxygen on the planet right now. Where are we living? In the habitat. <laughs> well, I think we start out. <laughs> we live in habitats, giant <laughs> hamster balls. I think we start out on Earth. Are we are we playing as people on Earth, kind of kind of? Pulling yeah, the strings, most, most likely. Or are we, if we're corporations, we wouldn't be set up that way. We're the CEO well, of the your board business, room. but you know, I mean, we could be back home, like launching, launching stuff to Mars. Well, that corporation I showed on the play, the, the as an example here, Phobos, they're largely in space. Phoblog. Phoblog, yeah. In fact, Phoblog can win the entire game without playing any tiles on the planet really? at all. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because That's they fun. just sit in space and dominate space. Huh? Huh? Maybe around space station. Yep, you can get your own space. You can build a toll booth in space and charge everyone else for going through space. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's the most capitalism, capitalistic thing ever. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right, let's play. I want to play. Great. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed that rules playthrough, and it's helped explain what's going on for you. Um, we will, of course, uh, reveal in more detail what happens with all the cards and everything as we play through the game, which we'll be doing tomorrow. So I hope you'll subscribe to the channel to come back for that. I hope you've enjoyed this and you'll throw down a like on the video. And if you have anything to add or anything to say or any opinions about the drafting and stuff like that, please leave a comment below for the people at home and also for us. And the Facebook page. Make sure you like the Facebook page. Oh, yeah. Make sure you go to our Facebook page and throw down a like so that we look like we have friends. <laughs> <laughs>
See you tomorrow, everyone. Bye.